we look at the incident itself, some of the failures that were involved in it, the manufacturers produce very, very good guidelines that come with all rebreathers. Uh, and one of the first key issues is failure to follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Uh, the second one that obviously contributed to this was the repacking of the rebreather canister, a partially reused canister. That means the reaction front had changed. So it was inevitable that the diver was going to become compromised with CO2 poisoning. It was just a matter of time. The third thing was really failure of the dive team to recognize the seriousness of the situation once the incident began to occur. It took them a long time to, to actually get a handle on that. And that could have had a disastrous outcome if they hadn't realized towards the end. The fourth thing they really need to think about, which all divers need to think about, is the suitability of their gas for bailout. This was a particularly long dive. It was a mission that involved filming, which was going to keep the divers in the water for a long period of time. Could potentially have created a fairly large, substantial decompression obligation. And yet, the dive was being done with a three-liter pony as a bailout gas. Was that suitable? Was the bailout gas for that dive appropriate? And people really need to think about that. Um, there was a huge lack of rebreather diving experience and I know that the team after this incident have spent considerable hours on the rebreather and we'd all now admit at the time the incident occurred they had relatively uh, had very very little experience on diving rebreather technology and had assumed that their scuba experience would carry on forward. It is a very very different type of technology and requires a different set of skills and I think they've now learned that as well. You're playing with fire, you're playing with the breathing mixture that keeps you alive and the CO2 absorbent, absorbing the expired CO2 from your breath is a key element of the rebreather. It's a very, very simple thing to do, it's, it's simply absorbed by the, the softener line, the, the, the mixture of, of calcium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Another area that people have problems with is they, they believe that you have to uh, pack the scrubber and the problem there is that people overpack. Now what we're dealing with is a very very simple filter that the gas has got to pass through in order to remove the CO2. So what we want to do is just fill the scrubber up to a certain level. It's self-packing, it's got springs on the, on the, on the, on the plate, on the pressure plate. Um, so it's self-packing, all you have to do is literally just fill it to the right level and put the lid on. Kevin has fully recovered from the incident and is now back at work with the dive team. He would say that he always put safety first, but now he has even more respect for the closed circuit rebreather on which his life depends.